Welcome to Revision UG at com. This is our lesson number 8 under light energy. In this lesson, we are now going to discuss it two optical instruments. One is going to be a periscope, then another one is going to be a pinhole camera. So at the start, let us now look at a periscope. Ah yes, what you are seeing over the screen, it's what you call a periscope. Have you ever seen one? Oh, right. So a periscope is a simple optical instrument, as we discussed earlier, uh, that optical instruments, they're all those instruments that use a light in order uh, to function. Uh, therefore, uh, this periscope is an optical instrument uh, used to see things that are above the eye level. So it is an instrument or optical instrument are used uh, to see or to view other things uh, that are above the things that are above the eye level. So as you are seeing this person, the tree is above, then the eye is below. So to see what is this way, now this person is using uh, this gadget, and this is what we call uh, the periscope. Then this periscope is made up of two uh, plane mirrors. Uh, yes, it is made up of two plane mirrors, and these plane mirrors are inclined at an angle of 45 uh, degrees. Don't forget that. Uh, so, uh, when you look at this one, uh, this one is a plane mirror, and this is also a plane mirror. Now, this is a plane mirror one, and this is the plane um, mirror two. Then, what happens when light falls onto the plane mirror one? Then, we are going to have a light being done what? A reflected. Therefore, the principle onto which this periscope works is that a light can be a reflected it is a, a reflection of light or light can be a reflected yes now when you look at this one light is emerging or it is incident onto this plane mirror from other tree then on reaching here then this plane mirror is going to reflect this light uh, to uh, the second plane mirror, then this second plane mirror is going to reflect light into uh, the eyes of the observer. So this one it is a curved periscope, and also this one is a periscope. So uh, those are what we call a uh, different kinds or different makings of other uh, periscopes. Yes. Now uh, these periscopes are very very uh, useful. Let us see other uh, uses of other uh, periscopes here. Uh, use number one. Uh, these periscopes are used by soldiers at war. Uh, yes, uh, they are used by the soldiers at war uh, to see their enemies uh, on land when they are in the trenches. For them, they remain uh, hidden. So, uh, they are used by soldiers at war uh, to see uh, to help them see uh, their enemies. Uh, to see their enemies on land while they remain hiding uh, while they remain hiding or they remain uh, hidden under trenches good the number two a uh, submarine soldiers also you know a submarine uh, that w that moves all under the seas just down there so the submarine soldiers i uh, use them uh, to see what is on the surface uh, to see uh, what is on uh, the surface of land uh, I mean of, of water sorry the surface of uh, water as for them they remain inside the sub uh, marine so these are the two crucial areas where we see the commercial areas uh, where we see uh, the periscopes being used also you can make yours and try to observe what is around the corner we've said that is a periscope a uh, works on a property of light which says a light can be reflected it uses two plane mirrors this one and this one and these mirrors are inclined at an angle of 45 uh, degrees all right so that is a simple optical instrument a periscope let us now move on and see the next uh, optical instrument okay uh, this is none other than a pinhole camera so what you are seeing here are uh, all of these three are the other the pinhole cameras now these pinhole cameras were invented 
uh, they were invaded by the Arabs. Do you know that? Uh, yes. So they made this one by around the 11th century uh, simply because they wanted to observe the eclipses. If you remember, an eclipse, the natural shadow uh, formed by the obstruction of sun's light by either the moon or the earth. Now, uh, so for them, uh, in order to see them or to view them clearly uh, without their eyes getting damaged, they used or they invented what you call a pinhole camera. So this pinhole camera it is also a simple optical instrument uh, with a small hole. That's why it's called a pin hole. So with a small hole, especially made using a pin like a needle uh, and any other thing which is very small, a small a small hole and it has a screen. Then a small hole lets in light and the screen, this is where the images are going to be cast. Remember we said an image is a light picture, right? Yes, an image is a light picture. All right, so as you are seeing over the screen, so this is our object. This one is the object. Then light is coming or it is incident and it's passing through this small hole. So here we have the hole and where we are getting the image cast, that's where we are having uh, the screen. Oh, right. Now, that is a pinhole uh, camera. Now, uh, this pinhole camera works on a principle. A, on a principle of light and I'll ask you this so the principle of light on which this one works states that light travels in a straight line light travels in a straight line remember we say that a periscope works on the principle a proper part of light which says light can be reflected or reflection of light but the pinhole camera for it does not use that reflection for it uses a property which says that light travels in a straight line i repeat the principle over which this pinhole camera works is uh, states that light travels in a straight line okay so now after looking at this then let us get to see the characteristics of the images formed by images formed by the the pin hall camera in if you remember our lesson is seven we looked at the characteristics uh, formed by the images formed by the plane mirror and we said they are upright they are virtual uh, they are of the same size image distance is equal to object object distance that are inverted and others but now here we are looking at the characteristics of the images formed by a pinhole camera one if you observe this what are you seeing now if you look at this tree here it is the object then we are having the image this is the object then this one is the image what are you not seeing mm, good of you the images are inverted yes so the images are inverted uh, the images are inverted meaning that the images are upside down then here examiners will pose a question why do you think that the images are inverted mm, very simple the images are inverted simply because light travels in a straight line uh, suppose if i'm to draw uh, my pinhole camera just here then i have my hole then i have my object here my tree then when light is coming from the top part of the tree it will not make a corner to go up to take it then this one which is coming from down will just come straight up to here there are for this one which has been up will follow this one then comes down and this one which has been down will be put up there like that so that's what we call inverted and now why why what has caused that one the light has traveled in a straight line has not bent it has not made corners simply because it is just its property of traveling in a straight line so because we do expect that if on reaching here it will now bend and go up no it has not bent it has just come straight then the upper part comes down the lower part goes up so i think you've put that one um uh, uh, to a clarity so images formed by the pinhole cameras are inverted 
Why? Because light travels in a straight line. Characteristic number two. The images are diminished. Mm, the images are diminished. What does it mean? So the images are diminished simply because uh, this, uh, no, it means that the images are smaller than the object. As you can see, this big tree, you are seeing it using this small box meaning that the image is small then the object is big then scientifically that is what we call a diminishing or being a diminished so the images are diminished then characteristic number three here uh, the images are <coughs> the images are real Mm, the images are real yes so there are only three characteristics one they are inverted they are diminished they are real but for the if we compare with a plain mirror we say that for the plain mirror they are upright it is the opposite so they are of the same size with the object and for them they are not real they are virtual meaning that they are not cast on a screen so with a plain mirror they are behind a mirror not on the mirror but within uh, within a pinhole camera the images are on the screen because inside there we put um the oiled paper to act as our screen so they are on that paper so they are on the screen so the images are real so they are real they are diminished they are inverted i think we are still are together then also here there is a point to note about a pinhole camera the size uh, of the images and the clarity of the or sharpness of the images formed onto the screen of the pinhole camera are those images or the image uh, it depends on the size of the hole mm -hmm. one size of the hole number two the distance the object distance mm -hmm. the object distance so these are the two factors affecting the sharpness or the brightness uh, or the, um, uh, the clarity of the images formed by the pinhole camera now suppose if you have a small hole you are going to form a small object which is very a small image which is very bright now if you increase the size of the hole you are going to get an image which is bald a uh, being bald it means that it's not clear and it's very big so it's very big but not clear it's faint then when we come to the distance if the object distance is short um, meaning that you are nearer to the object you are going to observe or you are going to receive also a bald image but again if the object distance is too long meaning that you are far away from the object then the image which is going to be formed is going to be small and very sharp or very clear uh -huh. so i think you've taken the two factors one the size of the pinhole and two the object distance that is the distance um between you who is having the camera and the object all right my dear Anna, then let me put uh, let me think that i've put right are those two uh, factors and i think you've now understood the pinhole camera as well as a periscope in our lesson number eight it is time for the activity number one number one number one says what is an image still what is an image the number two under which please for our number two under which principle under which principle does a pinhole camera work give the importance number three give the importance of having a very small hole in the camera study the diagram below study the diagram below and use it to answer 
the questions that follow. Mm -hmm. We are having our flame, then here we are having our cylinder, mm -hmm. then it has a hole, then we have rays here and a ray here. Mm -hmm. Then they are saying, draw an image, and draw an image in the diagram above. In the diagram above, then B, a state, any two characteristics of the images. Of the images formed in a penal camera. A pinhole camera. What would happen? Let's see. What would happen to the size of the image of the image if the object if the object was moved nearer was moved nearer the pinhole number five give a reason why why images formed images formed in a pinhole camera in a pinhole camera are called real images number six state the importance of the screen in a pinhole camera in a pin wall camera mm -hmm. okay you've been a good learner we meet in the next lesson that will be lesson nine thank you for following revision ug.com